Cyberpunk Jordan. Welcome to the Jordania Volcano Hotel, the only active volcano hotel in Orlando. Before you begin your descent, here's a couple of quick announcements. Jordan Soapbox is supported via Patreon. Become a patron today to help the channel continue to make questionable acquisitions to cover on the show. In exchange, you can receive rewards such as your name in the credits and picking a topic. Terms apply to that one. Become a gummy bear. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and turn on notifications so you can never miss another episode of Jordan Soapbox. And be one of those annoying people that always comment first. Seriously, you're not cute. We have a Discord server, because of course we do. Join today to hang out with me, talk about Sonic and Sega stuff, and more. And now, without further ado, enjoy the show. Hello my gummy bears, my name is Jordan, also known as CJ, and welcome back to Jordan's Soapbox, the show that talks about anything that I want to talk about. Well, it's time. I'll fully admit that I tend to focus more on the comic side of Sonic, but that doesn't mean I'm not interested in other aspects of the blue blur, such as television shows, movies, and of course, video games, with Sonic Frontiers being the latest of the latter. But before we do that, how did we get here? One thing you'll notice with any discourse of modern 3D Sonic titles is how fractured it is. It's about the only consistent thing about the franchise. Because since 2001 when Sega exited the console business, Sonic the Hedgehog has been utterly inconsistent, with wildly different stories, tones, gameplays, and so on and so forth. When compared to other similar franchises like Mario, there is at least some consistency in those titles, even if they are a bit different. Unfortunately, minus a few cases that even then barely meet that mark, Sonic hasn't had this. Now, I should probably mention as you're writing an angry comment down below, no, I don't hate all of the Sonic titles to come out since then. I actually like quite a few of them, like Sonic Heroes, Unleashed, and Colors. It's been exhausting with all of these entries of different varieties. It felt like a reboot after reboot to try and find something to make Sonic relevant again since the 1990s. Tears is, unfortunately, one of these reboots. And time will certainly tell whether it's just another trend of flicking an on-off switch with this franchise, but unlike previous attempts, it's a more soft reboot. And from start to finish, and to my utter surprise, Sonic Frontiers is dripping with confidence in its new direction. And I can say with just about as equal confidence that it's a flawed masterpiece. Yeah. Let me explain why that is. I want to start off with the story of Sonic Frontiers because that's what intrigued me the most when it was first announced. Gone are the woefully unqualified, but please be nice. Behave yourselves. Ken Pontac and Warren Graith. Now, Ian Flynn is writing this thing. If you haven't watched my show before, Ian Flynn has been a writer for Archie Sonic as well as IDW Sonic, and I could not think of anyone more qualified to write for a story like this one. Ian Flynn is known for balancing action with humor, and it's honestly the whole reason why the Archie Sonic comics even survived for as long as they did, honestly, but that's a story for another time. And likewise, the story balances serious storytelling while at the same time knowing when to have fun with itself. It's very similar in tone to Sonic Adventure 2 or even Sonic Unleashed. Now, in my opinion, there was two ways that Ian Flynn could have done this story. Either they could have done it very similar to Mobius 30 years later, where you had fun character interactions and story beats, or you could have a more complicated story that would involve a grand sweeping narrative, similar to Iron Dominion in Archie Sonic, or the Metal Virus Saga in IDW Sonic. The earlier was the one that was chosen, and I think it's probably for the best. Sonic Frontiers, while following events from other entries, doesn't have the same advantage of a built-up prelude that would be necessary for a grander tale. 
So we instead have a simple story of Sonic trying to find and save his friends in a mysterious new world. Yes, it is really simple when you boil it down. But if you've watched this show long enough, you'll know that simple stories do not mean bad stories. In fact, the simplest stories can often mean the best stories, and Frontiers really has an entertaining and fun one. Character interactions are the bread and butter of the story, and I'm happy to see these characters written in a way that actually suits their character for once. Amy Rose is especially a highlight for me. She's always been a favorite of mine, and to see her written in a much more mature manner is just... Oh, it's really wonderful. Tails is restored back to the capable and loyal sidekick, and Knuckles is back to being brash but the intelligent guardian of the Master Emerald. It's overall a much more personalized story, with Sonic not only needing to save his friends physically but emotionally as well. That doesn't mean there's only character interactions driving the story. The twists and turns that Frontiers takes was interesting, with the ancient civilization being related to chaos from Sonic Adventure, like I really didn't expect them to do that. That was wiped out by the entity that turned out to be commanding Sonic to destroy the Titans. Yeah, it should be a rule at this point to not trust artificial intelligence entities, especially ones that boss you around. Oh, speaking of which, Sage is an artificial intelligence entity created by Dr. Eggman, who kind of acts as if she's a daughter of Eggman. Which is an interesting angle for both the character and Dr. Eggman himself, which, surprise surprise, doesn't actually serve as the antagonist for Frontiers, but more of a supporting character. Overall, I know the story isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, there is some pacing issues and some things I wish could have been expanded upon, but you know what? It's still the best Sonic story in over a decade. It was captivating and wasn't just filled with humor, jokes, and whatnot, but the action-adventure vibe that's been missing from this franchise for a really long time. Sega Sonic Team, if you're listening, please hire Ian Flynn again. Or if you can't get him, just pick somebody else. I don't care, just get somebody from Archie or IDW Sonic. No, not him. Okay, so that's the story, but how does Frontier actually play? Because it's a video game, so that kind of is important. Sonic Frontiers in gameplay can be best described as eating any all-you-can-eat buffet. Not everything is delicious, but the sheer variety is astounding. The bulk of the title is spent in the open world, or zone, it's an open world, guys. You're not kidding yourselves. Where you were on a preset objective, that could be finding medals on the island associated with that character, to finding keys to unlock the Chaos Emeralds. You do so by exploring the island, finding the various mini-bosses scattered around the island, or using portal gears that could be obtained in the aforementioned manner as well to unlock cyberspace levels. These are essentially levels that are familiar territory for those who played Sonic Forces, except that these levels suck even harder than that game did. Yeah, they are the weakest aspect of Frontiers, not only because of the design of the levels, which I found really difficult to navigate at times, but because most of the keys are tied to completing challenges within those stages, such as fastest time, collecting red rings, and so on. I felt that the challenges were unfair, borderline impossible at times, and avoided them as much as I could to avoid my blue-colored Xbox controller being smashed out the nearest window and into the hot scorching lava outside. I understand the intent to include something familiar for those used to the style of Sonic Forces, but it was executed disastrously and would have weighed down the title a lot more if they were not one of many ways to complete this objective, one of which I didn't mention. Fishing. Yup, fishing with Big the Cat. It's actually a lot of fun and serves as a more relaxing experience compared to the rest of the title, with purple coins being the currency to fish found by exploring the world and through Starfall events, valuable resources, and egg memos, essentially Bioshock-esque audio logs with Eggman's opinions about the situation at hand, among other things. Honestly, I just expect one of these to play when I visit Rapture next time. With that said, each island has the end goal, minus one of them to turn into Supersonic and defeat the Titan, or main boss, of that island. Which is, I'm just going to say it, the most fun I have ever had is Supersonic. They are so well done and satisfying as heck. Thankfully, Frontiers avoids the issue of it being monotonous by having the player do different things throughout. Whether it's moving a bunch of cocoa to Amy or pinball. I like pinball. 
There are also collectibles to increase your abilities like ring capacity and speed, one of which is the Coco, these adorable little rock creatures that I'm starting to like a lot more than the Chow. Yeah, I did say that. No, I don't care. I'm disappointed these creatures weren't for a Chow Garden, because I still believe in having one, even if it's not a deal breaker. Some other activities in Sonic Frontiers worth mentioning are solving a variety of puzzles of mostly simple puzzles Tetris. There's freaking Tetris in this game. As a Russian, I very much approve of this. And also visiting certain areas to have Sonic talk about them, including ones that are going to get their own video because my gosh, they really weren't kidding with that tweet. They really weren't kidding. So while it has a wide variety of stuff that doesn't always work, I still felt satisfied and thought it was a lot of fun. This is now the miscellaneous section of the video that doesn't fit anywhere else. I love the environmental design of Frontiers. The realistic worlds depicted on the islands are beautiful and at times otherworldly, especially at night. Oh yeah, there's a day-night cycle, which is pretty neat. Music needs to be highlighted here. Sonic has always had really good music, mostly minus you. I don't like you. But Frontiers easily has the widest variety of music in a Sonic title and all of it slaps. Especially the Metal Gear Revenge style tracks like Find Your Flame, I mean th those are just bangers. It's also gonna put some nitpicks here like the lack of a photo mode, but all that turns out to be rectified in the DLCs because that's how long it's taken to me to get this review out. So, Sonic Frontiers. It's not perfect. Not by any stretch but it's flawed in a way that a masterpiece is. To me, a masterpiece is a game that just does so much right that any little blemishes you can overlook, and Sonic Frontiers definitely is. It does so much right, you just can't help but love it, even if there are a few blemishes on it. I only just want Sega slash Sonic Team to continue with what they have here because they should be proud of it. I think they nailed it. They nailed something that can work for Sonic with a few adjustments. I just hope that they continue on with it, improve it, and tweak it a little bit. But please, for the love of gosh, give me some consistency, please. Because if they do, this really can be a new frontier for Sonic. If they just continue heading towards it. That's all for this episode of Jordan Soapbox. If you must excuse me, I need to cope with the fact that we've had nothing but good Sonic stuff all year. Thank you for visiting the Jordania Volcano Hotel. We hope that you'll visit again soon. Before you leave, would you like something from our gift shop? Becca has the latest and totally not looted goods from all over the world. One item of note is the subscribe button coming from the US state of California. It works best when you ring its bell and turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode of Jordan's Soapbox. We also have a limited edition video that we also think you might like and a collection of Jordan Soapbox episodes in a playlist, all for the price of... Wait a minute. Free? We're giving this out for free? Becca, we are bankrupt!